uh, one, uh, one thing I want to tell you, uh, one thing I want to tell you, to be a missionary in North India is definitely a great privilege. I'm so privileged to be uh, a missionary here and we enjoy it. Last 13 years, uh, 13 years ago, when we moved to Madhya Pradesh, uh, in obedience to God's call, uh, we had many fears. We had many fears. But let me tell you, God has removed all such fears from its root. And one thing we can say, affirm very broadly, that God who called us is faithful. Uh, and he has been meeting all our needs. And uh, he is victoriously leading us. <clears throat> and uh, I just wanted to assure if anyone this morning listening to me uh, had a desire to get into ministry with but with genuine fears, let me tell you, go ahead. Those fears won't conquer you. Um, we had fears on our health. We had fears on our education of children. We have uh, fears on our resources. But in right time, everything God met perfectly. And we are glad we are in ministry today. Um, we are in Damo. Uh, Damo is uh, a district of Madhya Pradesh. Uh, Madhya Pradesh, you know, it is the center of India. And Damo is a, a district uh, having 1,392 villages, 1,392 villages. And of these 1,392 villages, 1,300 are villages with no Christian, not even a single Christian in uh, these places. Um, so it is a big uh, task ahead of us. And we have been here, and we are not unable to penetrate such a way uh, to the villages even today. Uh, it's difficult and uh, it's very difficult to get into villages. Uh, but one thing we want to tell uh, COVID, COVID-19. COVID-19 in its first phase was a big opportunity for us. It was a problem throughout India. But for us, it was a, a big opportunity to reach villages. And uh, we got a permission from the subdivisional magistrate for uh, COVID awareness in villages. And we went with that permission. We gave uh, awareness about COVID and we gave a uh, mask uh, to all villages and we provided uh, gospel literature. And uh, by the grace of God, we could cover uh, of the 1,300 villages, 900 villages, we could go there and uh, we could present the gospel to them in a, in, a, in a limited way, but at the same time, we could uh, uh, get there and pray for that village. That is a wonderful thing we could uh, uh, experience in this COVID season. Okay. <clears throat> uh, uh, so with that minimum introduction, I think, let us turn our attention to the word of God, uh, because this morning, uh, let's turn our focus on <clears throat> word of God. <clears throat> one of the epistles, one of the epistles in New Testament that has given me immense spiritual energy and much courage for ministry is the second letter of Apostle Paul to Timothy. So this morning, I just wanted to present second Timothy before you. You might have heard many messages, preached uh, many sermons out of it. But I don't know, this morning I am led by the Spirit to sh share some mission concerns from these letters uh, from a mere ministry perspective. Let's prayerfully turn our attention to uh, second letter of Paul uh, to Timothy. <clears throat> Friends, you know, this was the last letter of Apostle Paul. We are so we are well aware about it. This was the last letter of Apostle Paul. When <clears throat> Paul was writing this letter, he was in prison. And it is very difficult to read this letter without finding something like a mist gathering in our eyes. eyes. It's definitely a, a very moving human document. 
Apostle Paul, the aged, now fettered like a criminal, put in some dark, dank uh, prison. In chapter 1, verse 8, chapter 1, verse 8, he says, I am a knower of me, his prisoner. I am a prisoner. I am a prisoner. Chapter 2, verse 8, he says, I am, he says that I am suffering. I am suffering. It says that uh, I am suffering. <clears throat> I am suffering bound with the chains as a criminal. I have been treated as a criminal. So let's look chapter 4. We can get it's more clear. When you come to chapter 4, verse 16, he says, at my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. My first defense, no one stood with me. All deserted me. Chapter 4, verse 9, is telling, I am alone. I feel extreme loneliness. So do your best to come to me soon. Chapter 4, verse 6. I am already been poured out as a drink offering. And my time of departure has come. So if we put all, this to, all these things together in Paul's language, what he wanted to say to us, what he wanted to say to uh, Timothy, he wanted to say, <clears throat> I see an inevitable death, an unavoidable death. Many times I face death in prison, but this time I am almost certain, almost certain it is unavoidable now. So, but you know, death is common in prisons. Especially in winter season, many will die. But here you see, Paul, he doesn't want to die as a victim of extreme cold. So he is telling, somehow you need to extend my death, bring the cloth. I do not want to die as a victim of cold, but I want to offer my life, offer my blood as a drink offering at the altar of God. He is so certain few days from now, the sword of Nero will cut his head from his body. But he is telling, I am so joyfully waiting for that day. I am waiting. I am waiting for that day. But in verse uh, uh, 10, chapter 4, verse 10, he is telling, but even though I have that joy, I have a big pain. I have a very big pain. It's paining. What is paining me? Demas. I never dreamt Demas will leave me. I had a big, big hope on him. He was a young man. He had much vigor. He had much zeal. And that is the reason when Epistles, letters like Philemon, Colossians, when written, Demas, you know, it says that Lucas and Demas greet you. Paul, Demas and Lucas greet you. So in the letter of Philemon and Colossians, we see Demas, how close he was with Paul. But verse 10 says, Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted and gone to Thessalonia. I always tell one thing to my friends, missionary friends, whenever I take this uh, portion for uh, sharing, I used to say, one character I love in Demas is the moment he fall in love with the world, he stopped ministering. The moment he fell in love with the world, he stopped going with Paul. But many times, we are so clever. We are so shrewd. We are able to handle very easily 
world in one hand, the world in another hand. But Demas is an example for us. So in that way, Demas uh, is a good character. But Demas leaving uh, ministry give much burden, much pain in Paul's life. But one more thing that give me more strength in verse 11, chapter 4, verse 11, he says, bring Mark. You know who is Mark? Most probably he is John Mark, who left Paul in, you know, who, with whom Paul has a, a strong debate uh, in family, you know, you know, you, you know, in Acts chapter 15, verse 38, we, you see the record. But what is clear now, at this age, when he was expecting uh, death, when he is alone, at this point of time, that issue is no more. He has cleared it. But probably, you know, what is going in Paul's mind, Paul, as I said, is so certain that he is about to die. But before that, we want to clear whether Mark is having any apprehension that the great apostle was not entirely reconciled with me. So probably that is the reason he is telling, bring him. It's very useful for me. Let me tell you, friends. We may have differences of opinion and that opinions, if you hold on, we may, uh, we may lose relationship. So don't keep differences of opinion for a long time. One thing I want to tell you, at the end of the day, one thing last, one thing last, it's relationship. It's only that thing that remains forever is relationship. We do not know. We may not get opportunity like Paul. So I want to urge you so fast as possible. Let us build our broken walls and bridges. And verse 13, he says one more thing. Bring the cloak, my books and all patchment. What it shows us Till the last breath. His age and till the last breath, he was a student. He was a student of the word of God. And that is the reason we have this Bible. We have many letters of Paul. Even at the last moment of his life, last breath, he was a student of the word of God. If you look chapter 4 verse 7, we can see threefold phases of Christian life. Chapter 4, verse 7. It's a very familiar verse. Usually we use uh, uh, in funeral services and all. Very familiar verse. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Friends, we need to understand we have a threefold uh, Christian ministry has a threefold phase. One, Christian ministry, Christian life is a fight. And second, it is a running race. And thirdly, it is to worship. We have something to fight on. We have some destination to run. And we have something to guard. That is the faith. So everyone, whether you are a pastor or a missionary or a teacher or a businessman, whoever you may be, if you are a Christian, you have a fight. You have a fight. And Paul is very clear what kind of fight he is having, what kind of fight he had in Ephesus. You know, you know all these things. I have no time to get into those things. <clears throat> we are we are in uh, in. Uh, we are in fight and we are on a running race and it's very clearly given in Acts and you know, Hebrews chapter 12, you know all about this, about the running race. We have given, you know, the track that is exclusively, you know, track that is uh, in, in, in a simple good news version, I read like this, you have a track that is exclusively set for you. 
Pastor Thomas, Pastor Nairan, uh, Pastor Manu, all of us, all, all believers, we all are running in different track. But we, God has kept us a very special track, exclusively set for us. And we have, we have something to guard on, that is faith. <clears throat> so Paul is telling, when I look forward, I see crown ahead. When I look back, yes, I have completed. But when I look side, I see all of you. One day, we will together meet our heavenly father. Friends, let me tell you, here is a, a servant of God. Now let me enter into the text. Here is a servant of God. An old man served his master for almost a lifespan. He traveled immensely, worked and toiled hard, experienced manifold suffering, received many kinds of accusation, and at times thoroughly been misunderstood. Rejected at many times. And in, in this letter, when we come to chapter 1, verse 15, he's telling, you are aware that all are in Asia, turned away from me. All are in Asia, turned away from me, except one person. You know, friends, years of ministry. Years of ministry. Hard work, years of toiling, years of investment. But almost at the deathbed, he's seeing his ministry is becoming a big zero. Nothing left out. Everyone deserted me. So at this point, he writes this letter to Timothy. The reason I have taken you to all these Bible passages, even though it is familiar, it's very familiar for all of you. Uh, but the reason I took you all these Bible passages is to tell the background of this letter. At this point, he's writing this letter to his true son, Timothy. What he wanted to communicate to Timothy. And I said, that gave me immense strength. I have committed my life at the age of 17, but I couldn't get into ministry. God helped me to complete my studies a little more further. But when I come, when I reach here on 2008, that year itself, this letter started to edify me. And even today, it is giving much, much courage in my life. What Paul wanted to communicate to Timothy, he's not telling Timothy enough. I have told a lot, but at the end of the day, I receive nothing. Nobody is with me. So my son, Timothy, you need not have to make the same mistake. Get into some other work. Do something else. Otherwise, you will also be ended up like me. No, he was not telling like that. He was not telling like that. You know, you know all, very rarely, uh, pastors, children becoming pastors. But your pastor is an exception. He's a son of Pastor M.D. Samuel, a giant of Pentecostalism. I knew him from my childhood. It's hard, but Paul is advising to Timothy, my son Timothy, from few moments from now, I will be history. I will be just a memory. You won't see me, but I wanted to 
pass this mantle to you in your hand. And that gives the beauty of this letter. There are four chapters in this letter. If you summarize these four chapters in one word, in one word, that word would be gospel. Four chapters, we can see four specific charges. We can see many charges, but I wanted to bring into four. Four main charges Paul is giving to his true son Timothy as he passes the mantle to his next young dynamic potential Timothy. What are those charges? And those charges are still valid for us. Chapter 1 verse 14. That is the first charge. Chapter 1 verse 14. It says like this. By the Holy Spirit. Who dwells within us. God. The good deposit. Entrusted to you. Charge 1. Guard the gospel. Guard the gospel. Timothy, I want to charge you, even at this moment. All deserted me, that is one thing. I have invested in them as he also left me. But I want to tell you, Timothy, guard the gospel. Guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Charge number two. Chapter two, verse three. Share in the suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Suffer for the gospel. Guard the gospel. And you are charged to suffer for the gospel. Chapter 3, verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned. Continue in gospel. Continue. Continue in ministry. Continue in gospel. And final charge we can see, chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the gospel. Timothy, you must guard, you must suffer, you must continue, and you must preach the gospel, irrespective of the season. Timothy is asked to guard, protect the good deposit that has been entrusted to him. And that deposit have been guarded by Paul over these years. And he wanted to tell, I have guarded the gospel with life. It was a tough exercise. Guarding something, a lighted candle, or protecting a lighted candle from the wind. It was a very difficult exercise. In the act of guarding gospel, from all adulteration in the act of protecting his purity and holiness and divinity. Many have deserted me. You know, Paul is not an ordinary person. He's much educated. He knows diplomacy. He knows how to handle people. He can. If he could have compromised gospel, many could have been stay with him. But he said, except one, Anosiphorus, and his family. What was the distinctive mark of Anosiphorus? He had no shame on, he had no shame on my chain. My gospel was a gospel of chain, gospel of pain, gospel of jail. 
But except one, all others deserted me, and they have, they have gone behind a different gospel. But Timothy, I want to tell you, even at this moment, even though it is hard, you must guard the gospel with no compromise. And he wanted to tell, I was always strict against wrong teachings. I did not engrave them on full pitch. I did not entertain them. Timothy, it was, it is going to be very hard for you, but you should. But one thing he is telling to Timothy, for that act, that for that task, you cannot hope to guard the gospel by yourself. You can do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is what I want to impose. By the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells within you, who dwells within us, guard the good deposit. Pentecostal church, servants of God, we are understood to guard the gospel in its purity and its dignity. But we need to understand we can't guard it by intellectual debates. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is already deposited in us. So make sure every member in our church, every member in our fellowship, every missionaries, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. They lead a life in the Spirit of God. We know many things are available in the Christian markets similar to gospel. But Paul is telling, reminding us once again, charging us once again, even in this end day. Cut the gospel. It is given in your hand. Paul is telling, that is, that what, is, that is what I received. That which I received, I am handing over to you. Yan Kartav in the Prabhupada. It is a rich tradition. It is not traditions. It is the tradition of the church. It's so rich. It's so pure. It is handed over to us and it is our duty to protect and safeguard it in its virginity and purity. So that is the primary task for all of us, whether you are in a mission field, whether you are in a church, whether you are uh, in a metropolitan city or wherever, whether you are in a village, this is the, the primary charge for all of us. The second charge here, Paul is telling in chapter 2, verse 2, suffer for the gospel. Paul is in prison and he, he, is, he has ample opportunity to watch Roman soldiers and he has been meditating on it how to make parallel between the Roman soldiers and, and Christian. And in many of his letters, particularly his personal letters, he's talking about the uh, soldiers, uh, dress, chairs, and uh, warfare equipments. But here, in this letter, in the last letter that is given to Timothy, he's talking about the dedication and willingness to both suffer and concentrate. You know, soldier on active service, they can't expect a safe and easy time. They take risk. They take hardship as part and parcel of their call. If Christian is loyal to the gospel, it's true, he and he or she, you know, surely experience opposition and ridicule. But on the other side, we know we cannot avoid ordinary duties at home, work and society. So what is forbidden, what is forbidden the good soldiers of Jesus Christ is not, you know, it's not all secular activities, but rather entanglement. Which though they may perfectly innocent in some times, it can hinder our fighting in Christian battles. 
Many times we think suffering is only for missionaries. When we come about, when we talk about suffering, many times it's physical attacks. Yet that is one thing that is true. Even yesterday, somebody has given a warning to me. It can, it can happen. It can happen at any time. But here, Paul is not talking just physical attack. It's not just physical attack. He is telling our choice. Chapter 2, verse 11, he says, you have a choice. Choice to die or choice to live. You have a choice to endure suffering or avoid suffering. You have a choice to deny or denied by him. It's your choice. One example I can tell you, friends, you know, in book of uh, uh, Genesis, you know, the fight of four kings and five kings in recorded in chapter 14. Abraham fought for Loth. And while returning, someone offering huge money to Abraham. And he denied. You know all the story. But next chapter verse, chapter 15, when it comes to chapter 15, the first word, fear not Abraham. What I feel at home, when you reach home in the evening, Abraham probably was going through this old drama in the morning, in the night. He thought, I should have get it. I should have get it. Why, why did I say no? So many times what happened, friends? We have a choice to compromise or fight on. In the, in the job place, in the ministry place, many places we can see this. But Abraham, he decided, he decided not to take it. But that, that night, God is telling, reminding Abraham, Abraham, fear not. You have rejected a big offering. But I want to tell you, I will be, I will be, I'm not, I am not going to give you another. I will be your mighty reward. I will be. Friends, let me tell you, I'm a Christian Jeevadatil. He suffering in the Varay another. Shadidiya Matula Riklasha Matula. Chela Samayata compromise you on Namur Loga Amshi. Number of good of Lurva in Burda Portangalagan Yellario Pidichina Itreonum Vishitionum Banda Itreonum Idinde the Pura Bonda, Avana and the Kari Nokan. Get a Palagari Lamuke Abrahamani Vada Chayarin Tanachadichana Pashavan Jedina and any Vendia Savodan Vendi Udam Jedu. I will be. I will be your mighty reward. Suffer for the gospel. And the third charge, let me go first. The third charge, chapter 3, verse 14. But as for you, Continue in what you have learned. And I that give me great joy when I saw children sharing the word of God. And friends, even though it is pattern of our church, it's pattern of a tradition. But I want to tell you, it is 
it's a big work it's a big work when suffering comes it is quite natural to get out of to discontinue and it happened in ministry it is not just a holding on what you have received from the past but it is an invitation to look future continue in what you have learned and become convinced of this verse is a command to hold on what timothy has already come to know about paul you know how transparent it is paul is telling my teaching my way of life my purpose my faith my patience my endurance my love all is an open book for you he tells you know all about me continue endana paulus nodu parayanalla in chapter 1 you know you know paul is talking about timothy and the paul is uh, giving a mark on his mother and grandmother he has received immense of bible knowledge he has received the basic foundations and that foundation make him strong and steady you know always against any kind of wind when suffering come it is quite natural but he is telling to timothy continue in order to continue you, you need to be convinced if you want to make our children stand for the word of god if you want to see the next generation holding this bible you need to teach them share them തിബത്തിയോസിനെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം തുടരുവാനുള്ള ഒരൊറ്റ കാരണം എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അവന്റെ അമ്മ അവന്റെ വല്യമ്മ അവര് കൈമാറിയ ഒരു ആത്മീയ അനുഭവം അതിന്റെ മേൽ അവന്റെ ആത്മീയ മെന്റർ ഓളിന്റെ കൈയൊപ്പ് ഐ വാണ്ട് ടെൽ ദ ചർച്ച് ഓൾ എൻ ഡേസ് ഇൻ ദ ചർച്ച് ഈവൻ യുഫ് യു ഹാവ് ഓൺലി വൺ സ്റ്റുഡന്റ് ഇൻ ദ സൺഡേ സ്കൂൾ even is only one student in the class keep on teaching them every young every young stays try to become mothers and every elders try to become spiritual mother and spiritual fathers for our children and they will stand firm they will continue they will keep on our first duty is to communicate the gospel guard the gospel and if you do so we shall undoubtedly suffer for it it's true because authentic gospel was never popular as suffering increases we will be tempted to trim or we will eliminate those elements which gives us offense and cause of opposition it is a tendency but timothy is asked to continue in gospel irrespective of situation and the final one is a charge to preach the gospel season or unseason timothy you must be ready preach the gospel in season and not season years before i read a book and it says that about leadership it says in one thing leader is never wait for opportunity they create opportunity it is true if somebody is giving us an opportunity to share the word of god it is one thing but creating an opportunity and sharing the word of god is another thing you can you can create many many manifold opportunity in your job place in your work place in your travel you can share the gospel but paul is asking to timothy preach the gospel in season or unseason and i certainly believe 
for india we are in the 11th hour we do not know how long we are able to preach one after another one after another yesterday evening i got a message from one of our missionary working in chatisgarh he been taken to the police to office sp office the reason is two people you know one from his church and another from another church they are both on grown up in christian foundation coming from hindu background they have decided to marry and church is about to conduct the marriage that is the only thing and in the name of religious conversion he been taken one after another one after another intelligence bureau local investigation bureau all are behind missionaries one after another one after another. it is 11th hour we do not know but even at this point we need to make sure that we will be preaching we will keep on preaching we will not withhold preaching and we will go on because india we have 1652 languages and i certainly believe every knee shall bow every tongue will confess i do not know when it will happen but there are 1652 languages in india 4635 people groups in india 6 lakhs villages 600 districts we have miles and miles to go but we are we believe and we trusting in god one day this nation will bow before god and before my eyes close before i become an history i am certain few more villages in madhya pradesh few more districts in india will have fellowship centers friends whether it is season or no season we are commanded to preach the gospel we are ready to preach the gospel and i certainly believe the greatest task church is given in this earth is not worship we are not called to worship we have an entire eternity to worship the god we all will be worshiping the lord there we have no other work there we will have immense of time we will have lot of time to worship the lord there and we are worshiping here also but we have an entire eternity to celebrate the victory of god there but we have only few moments to declare that victory the proclaim that victory god has established here that is evangelism that is discipleship that is missionary activity so friends we need to guard the gospel keeping it always pure whatever the cost may be and we need to preserve it against every corruption that is the primary task and we need to guard it faithfully and at the same time we need to spread it actively and we need to suffer for it bravely we have only one life we do not believe in many lives only one life and we have miles more to go at the end of the day we was so sad in few moments from now i will be i will get the cotton i will enter into cotton even at that moment he is telling to timothy timothy i want to charge you i am commission you i am commissioning you got the gospel i know 
in america guarding gospel may be difficult different from guarding gospel in india but church at arizona you have a big responsibility protect the gospel in its purity keep it as as pure as been transferred to us from our forefathers and make sure that we are transferring it to faithful men so that they will edify others so every christian we need to see minimum four generation if paul if i am paul i have received from christ i received and i am transferring it to my disciple and they you know transferring it to capable men and they in turn to others so every christian should have we need to pray for the four generation christian fewer with the gospel we need to guard the gospel situation in america may be different how to suffer but suffering is part of christian life people will say you are a fool but suffer for the gospel when you suffer you may lose many things but one thing god wanted to remind you i will be your mighty reward don't worry you may lose many things here to take a stand on the faith people might have called you fool buddhu even they might have called many names but one thing god wanted to tell you assure you that i will be your reward and continue in gospel in order to withstand with the heavy wind you need strong foundations and the strong foundation we need to lay down and one of the strong foundation in our church is sunday school make sure that our children are found in the word of god make sure that their questions are thoroughly and correctly answered because they are living in a in a heavy wind a wind of uh, theism theism on one side wind of islam on another side wind of many religion on another side wind of no faith in another side but make sure that they are strong in the word of god and for that timothy had a mother some of us may not have that privilege because we might have been find god after reaching usa or you know for our and you know, later time we might have seen came to this way but i want to tell you i want to encourage every young stays be parents be spiritual parents of the children so that they will withstand with the word of god and irrespective of season irrespective of time always make sure that i will be preaching the word of god i will be sharing the word of god because i have few more hours i have only few more hours i have a big i have miles and miles to go further but i need to share the word of god may the lord richly bless the church by this word and i thank for this opportunity to uh, <clears throat> thomas the uncle for giving me this opportunity and all the dear believers in the arizona church and if anyone is have a desire to visit north india my heart and my home our face is uh, widely open you can just call and come sometimes and being with us and experience the ministry uh, life here with our missionaries you are welcome uh, and uh, pray for us uh, god bless you